If you want to record great sounding audio with one of these, and one of these, you'll need one of these. Here's how it works. USB microphones are a straightforward way to record your vocals, guitars, or whatever into your iOS device and GarageBand. Unless you're using one of the newer iPad Pro models, you'll be connecting your USB microphone of choice to your iDevice via its lightning port. Therein lies the problem here. Most popular USB microphones output to a USB-A port. This blue Snowball Ice USB microphone, for example, comes with a mini USB to USB-A cable. That ain't gonna fit. That's where this adapter comes in. This is Apple's Lightning to USB 3 camera adapter. Now don't let the name fool you. This is as much an essential bit of kit for iOS music makers as it is for photographers. It's worth noting that while you will find cheaper third-party versions of this adapter online, I would highly recommend that you stick with Apple's official one. Third-party versions of Apple accessories have a bad habit of becoming useless and unusable over time, especially when Apple updates its software. It has a lightning connector on one end and a USB-A and lightning port on the other. Attach the USB-A plug from your microphone into the USB slot on the adapter and then plug the adapter's lightning plug into your iPad or iPhone. If it's open when you connect, GarageBand will recognise that you have attached a microphone and ask if you want to turn on monitoring. This allows you to hear what the microphone is picking up, so you're going to want to turn this on. This message also mentions that wearing headphones is best to avoid feedback. That's the horrid screechy sound that happens when your speakers output the same signal that's been picked up by your microphone. Ugh. On iPads that have lightning connectors, this isn't an issue. Just plug a pair of headphones into the three quarter inch headphone jack and you'll be good to go. Apple removed the headphone jack from iPhones back in 2016. And yes, I'm still salty about it. That leaves you with a couple of options. You can connect Bluetooth headphones to monitor your recordings, though even GarageBand considers this a bad idea as you'll have a message pop up warning you about latency when you connect. The other option is to pick up a USB microphone that has an onboard headphone jack that you can use to monitor your recordings. This blue snowball is a great budget USB mic. Its ability to plug and play is really, really convenient, but it does lack a built-in headphone jack. Other USB microphone options that you may want to consider are the Snowball's bigger brother, the Blue Yeti, or something like this, the Samson G-Track Pro. Not only does the G-Track Pro have an onboard headphone jack for low latency monitoring, there's also built-in controls for more flexibility and a noticeable boost in sound quality compared to more budget USB microphone options. All of that comes at a cost, however, as unlike the Blue Snowball, the G-Track isn't plug and play. If I attach the G-Track Pro in the same way that I hooked up the Snowball, GarageBand throws up this message. The G-Track Pro is a hefty bit of kit and as such requires more power to operate than an iPad or iPhone can provide on its own. This is where the lightning input on the camera adapter comes into play. If I attach a lightning cable to the input next to the USB-A input on the adapter and then plug it into the mains, the G-Track Pro becomes usable, allowing me to record some pretty darn top-notch audio into my iDevice. Everybody hates auto-tune even though it's now a valid studio tool, just like anything else. So there you have it. That's how to connect a USB microphone to an iPad or iPhone. 
If you're just getting started with GarageBand on iOS or just want a refresh on the basics, you can grab my beginner's guide, Getting Started with GarageBand, absolutely free. I'll put a link to that down below. I've been Patrick from the GarageBandGuide.com and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.